relation to your academic community and research and how you how you work. How do we do that? How do we do that? Um, and and we're gonna we're gonna kind of talk about that sort of towards the end of the day. Hopefully, as we go through, we'll sort of build those connections for all of us um, and looking for that answer because I think I think our current status quo and you think about how many countries are represented here in regions of the world is much less than what we'd really like to see happen. And so how do we get to that idea? Yeah, so. and later we're going to touch upon how you build upon the economical uh, structures that you need to process this and to get this thing going. We're also going to be talking about staffing and programming and things where you can take these identified issues and start to plan for developing uh, your strategies. So what I will do at lunchtime is uh, write this stuff down and then hopefully um, at the end of the day we'll look at our ideal again and say, how are we going to get there? All right, so we'll try and tie it all back to this eventually. Okay. Good job. Give yourselves a hand. I just want to comment, you guys, it's very good to have a group of things so concretely about what they're doing here. It's, yeah, sometimes we don't get a whole lot of input. It's, it seems like everybody here has really identified, you know, what their what their needs are and who they see as their stakeholders. So that's a great beginning. Thank you. Okay, so the next piece of this, um, one thing I'm going to introduce you to, is, if you don't, I, I'll be curious to see who's heard of this, um, is the Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria. How many are aware of the GSTC, the Global Sustainable Tourism Criteria? Great. Not too many. And that's actually good. So we have the handout for you. about sustainability. 
and I think everybody here is probably on this page, I hope, but we think about really pillars of not only the environmental side, not only the sort of the base pillar of a healthy environment, we also think about the social cultural aspects, which if you look at the list of stakeholders you mentioned today, very much the social and cultural pieces or layers of a community or destination. And we also, of course, have to have economic sustainability. If we didn't have tourists going down that river, do you think our landowners with River Fiji would be on board with this idea of, no, don't, don't cut those trees 200 meters. They want to cut every single tree on that river because they need an economic driver. So if we can have an economic driver, that becomes a really forceful piece of all of this. Um, and we believe, as, uh, and I work with this organization called the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, and we believe that on a global scale, tourism does have the power to change and make the world a better place because of the power of the traveler. And I think in all of our situations today that we talked about, we talked about the power of that traveler dollar. Um, preserving destinations, giving an impetus for conservation, uh, helping communities that often are marginalized uh, to revitalize and have a new economic direction. We feel that tourism can be that piece. Obviously, that associates to alleviating poverty. And if we alleviate poverty, we have the opportunity for increased quality of life within our communities. Um, we believe tourism can help safeguard cultural heritage. So those dollars going directly back in to help protecting and rebuilding and, and preserving some of the, the heritage that we have. And then on a broader scale, um, this has been my mantra for the last couple of years, but really um, using tourism as a tool for positive change to address some of the worst societal ills that we face today. And that's everything from uh, uncontrollable diseases like HIV, AIDS, and, and malaria to uh, extreme poverty alleviation to women's rights. So tourism can be that vehicle for change. Um, and then jobs, of course, and then keeping tourism dollars within destinations because we know when that happens, there's a positive end result. But when we talk to governments, when we talk to some of these stakeholders, some of the issues came up right here in Korea, they don't have a clear understanding of what sustainability is and how that translates. So some people think, oh, that's green. That's that green stuff, those green people over there. Others think, oh, yeah, it's all about, um, you know, saving the trees, you know. Oftentimes, we don't have that holistic uh, concept in our brains. And these are just this little word diagram sort of bring out everybody's perceptions. If you ask them, what is sustainable tourism? You're going to get probably 50 or 60 different answers. And making a case to government or making a case to a local community makes that case even harder when we as an industry can't get our heads around a clear definition. So we have all kinds of names for this idea, right? Green tourism, ecotourism, cultural tourism, adventure tourism, community tourism, responsible tourism, sustainable tourism, ethical tourism. I mean, you could probably name five more things that people associate with sustainable tourism. And we have about 145 different organizations right now that are claiming that they can certify you as a sustainable tourism operation. Mm -hmm. And those range from extremely gold status, like the CST in Costa Rica, to some examples I could point to in the United States that are just a marketing ploy. Mm -hmm. So we have a great variation of the type of certifiers that are out there. And we have different levels of certification. So we have everything from a local community certification to a national certification to a global certification. So imagine being a tourist and trying to get behind this idea. We're not making it very easy for them. And we're not making it very easy for someone coming into the industry to define sustainability in their own operation. And we believe that global change cannot happen without clarity in the concept. 
Therefore, we introduce the global sustainable tourism criteria. And this is a set of common guidelines and has a whole host of industry input, government input, United Nations input, uh, uh, IUCN input. There is a whole host of organizations, individuals, and industry that have sort of um, helped us define sort of the baseline minimum for sustainability. And that's everybody. UNWTO has been involved, and I've mentioned some of these other organizations. Costa Rica, certainly. Japan has been involved. There's all over the world people have provided their ideas. Um, in the end, when we came up with this list of what you're looking at right now, um, there was an outreach to over 80,000 different constituencies. This is big, because this is the first time as an industry we've actually gotten around an idea together in a global community. Um, 2,000 experts weighed in, so you might have the head of World Wildlife Fund for Nature, you might have the head of Tourism Concern, so everything from the environmental to the social side. It took about 18 months for the first delivery of that criteria, but honestly, it took about 10 years leading up to that 18 months. There was a group called the Sustainable Tourism Stewardship Council with Rainforest Alliance's help and some other organizations' help that was working towards what would it look like if we all got around a set of criteria that would help us as an industry define sustainability. There was at least five rounds of consultation, so that criteria that you're looking at maybe was 45 or 55 at one point, and it went out to the public, and anybody from, from a person walking on the street to student to professor to tour operator to hotelier could comment and say, I don't understand this, or this doesn't rank so high in my book, and they could comment on these criteria. And they looked at criteria from over, I don't know, these 140-odd organizations, and over 4,000 criteria were actually reviewed to see what are the commonalities amongst all those org organizations that are setting a standard out in the industry itself. And ultimately, for any criteria that actually got approved, we needed people to gather around those criteria. So there was a 91% agreement that this is an important piece to include. So what you're looking at is sort of the end result. ICL compliant just simply means that it went through a process that is legitimate for setting standards. There's a group that actually accredits the accreditors. Um, so that group said, you know, what does it take to really create a standard? Well, it takes stakeholder involvement, this, that, and the other. So we went through that process and the GSDC is a member of the ICL. So what are they? They're this universal language. Instead of having to define through a definition, it's defined through on-the-ground action. And that these would be a baseline for the industry. Not, not the stellar, maybe not the CST yet, but for the industry to get on board, if we did these things, we'd be addressing some of the most important social, cultural, economic, and environmental pieces for sustainability. And in essence, it's certifying certifiers. So CST, uh, Japan Eco Lodge Association certification program are all going through processes that are recognized by the GSTC to say these groups are really meeting the baseline understanding of sustainability. And what it ended up is right now it's 40 criteria. We went through a second round, you know, went through that first round three years ago as part of the ICO compliancy you have to go through this evaluation every three years. And it really addresses four concrete pillars. So in order to manage sustainability, you have to have sort of the infrastructure in place to create a sustainable product, right? So sustainable management becomes a, a system uh, for that development of that sustainable product. We also look at social, economic, cultural, and environmental, and that's what you have on board. Um, there's a lot of power in the single solution. It's, it's growing in its uh, acceptancy in the United States. I'm at least happy to say we're starting to get on board. We have over 170 mayors that signed a declaration to say that they will utilize this criteria in developing uh, tourism in their cities. 
Outside of that, we have several destinations getting on. And consumers are ready for this. They're ready for clarity in sustainability. And Masaro gave me a time's up, so I've got to, I've got to scoot. Um, as a council, you can become a member very easily. And what the council is doing is, as, a, as an organization is helping to educate and get the criteria out there and use this not only at the United Nations level, but at a very localized level through hotels, national parks, tour operations, and uh, increasing the demand for sustainable tourism. Um, right now, again, we had 76 founding members. The organization now has about 250 members worldwide. And we do cover all of the continents. And in the end, if we can be a sustainable industry, we all benefit. Travelers, distributors, tourism boards, governments. It's something we can all get our heads around. Um, okay. So, uh, I think I'll stop there. I think we might be able to talk about some of these. I'll just give you one example of just how this is being implemented. Um, this group, the Fairmont Hotel Organization, they already have several good practices in place, but they wanted something to, to talk to their shareholders about and say, you know, we want to be on a global scale compliant and sort of in the realm of sustainability on a global understanding. So they've used it to identify sort of gaps in their organization. So they, in their case, they had sort of socioeconomic support gaps. They had cultural impact gaps that they never considered. Um, and they're able to have third party, edit, you know, a third party evaluation now. So they found that really helpful. Uh, I will stop there. And my time is about up, so we're going to Okay, so so what we thought, first of all, I'll stop there and see if there's any questions about the GSTC. So what we thought we would help do is for you to get your heads around sustainability. Many of you are there. Um, but we've used the GSTC framework as sort of addressing specifics within tour operations. So what does that look like on the ground? And, and our hope was to kind of give you an understanding of from a environmental and economic or social cultural perspective, what that might look like, and then have you go back and look at your own uh, operations, parks, and uh, sort of evaluate it a little bit later on, probably after lunch, based on time. So are there any questions about the GSTC? And I must tell you that another um, very important initiative a very challenging initiative is the GSTC has developed um, draft criteria for destination management. So that would be very applicable to a national park, could be very applicable to a small island nation uh, or a small island if you have tourism at a specific uh, destination in the Philippines, for example. Um, so that there are several case studies about that going on, and I'll point you to the website for that, or we can talk about it a little bit later. Um, so, Eric, or? Yeah, so it's very, very interesting. So the question I have, which may not be answerable, um, is that I, I'm from a country that I know has people that work on, um, yeah, so I'm from a country that I'm sure has people with a diminished of tourism that work on these global on um, sustainable tourism stuff because they travel all over the world to meetings and conferences. Uh, my question is is, is um, whether the, in the development of the GSTC uh, you have any indication of how say the Bahamas was involved or what we might have committed to or, or promised or, or whatever. I, I just want to make sure that this is sounds to be really exciting and I think I may have heard this mentioned by somebody in the Ministry of Tourism, but none of this is really being applied okay. in the Bahamas. So I, I, it's mm -hmm. probably too specific, sorry. To be no, 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 yeah. that's totally okay. Um, I believe, Eric, and we, I can check this actually, because we have record of everybody that was involved from the get-go. When we say that 80,000, we can actually point to organizations that were involved. 
And there was um, several groups from the Caribbean holistically region that were represented there. There was CAST initially, the Caribbean Association of Sustainable Travel and Tourism. Um, so they were, there were some representatives from there. Um, and then organizations that work in the Caribbean, so um, everything from uh, conservation organizations to some tour operators. Um, specifically, I can't recall exactly what the Bahamas involvement is, but but more and more um, uh, at a government level, people are sort of you know starting to take a look at this, and we do have destinations that are starting to take a look at this. So, but I think I think that's very important to. What I'm after obviously is is to make sure there's ma maximum efficacy because in a lot of these programs, uh, government representatives attend. And, and here, I do yeah. apologize if anyone here represents a government. I used to work for government, so I know. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen so many of these wonderful initiatives been developed. Uh, the Ministry of Tourism will be scanning the networks and find out about it. And then there's a half a, 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 a halfway application of it in the country, but really no true benefit. So that's why I 